Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, once again it's time for the Q&A, so let's go ahead and get this started. Alright, first question. Thoughts on incorporating 2 to 3 heavy singles at 90 to 95 percent, or RPE 8 through 9 after uh, work is done? Alright brother, uh, what you were asking here is actually two separate questions. I didn't even realize that because I had asked the guy further what he meant. 90 to 95 percent is not RPE 8 or 9. Uh, it's more like RPE nine to nine and a half, and that's assuming you're fresh. In, in other words, if you've done, let's say three sets of 10 with something like 70%, there is no way you're gonna hit 95% of your wonder at max for a single afterwards. If you do, if you can successfully pull that off, it's not gonna be RPE nine, it's probably gonna be RPE 10 and it's probably gonna feel like a competition max, meaning you're gonna have to psych yourself up, uh, jam your music hard, and grind out that rep, and there's no way you're doing two of them. It's not gonna happen. You will 100% chance fail the second one. I'm gonna go out here and let me say that again. Let's say your max is 300 pounds and you do three sets of 10 on a big exercise, right? So you've done some rep work. You try to come in and do 285, if your true one rep max, competition max is 300, you're gonna grind it out. It's gonna be extremely difficult. It's gonna be RPE 10. If you attempt a second rep, even if you say take 10 pounds off the bar, it's probably gonna staple you. You're gonna miss the rep. Uh, so make up your mind, do you want 90 to 95% or do you want RPE eight or nine? because it's not gonna be RPE eight or nine if you've done other training first. Uh, so what I'm gonna tell you here is don't really mix your rep ranges like that. I don't think it's a great idea to do a bunch of high rep sets on an exercise on the same day you do heavy singles. Uh, you need to separate those. If you wanna do some concurrent style periodization, go ahead and do so. Uh, but if for some reason you decide that you don't mind spacing your work far enough apart, I'm going to say do your volume work after your singles. Do your singles first, then do your volume work. Uh, that, that's really the only way that makes sense, really from a, a training perspective, if you actually want to get some, the most out of it. All right, uh, next question. What would happen if someone focused only on heavy eccentrics? What would happen? They would spend five times as much time in the gym to gain the same amount of muscle, and they would probably gain slightly less concentric strength. This has been studied, uh, and you've only got two choices on doing this, and they're all dangerous other than a forklift. You either bring a forklift into the gym, and I do mean that literally, because if your max squat is 400, your eccentric max is probably going to be, say, 434, 444, 50, right? You're going to be able to do an eccentric with 450. You're going to need the forklift to lift each rep. Your other option is to, you know, again, take things like bench, your squat, everything else, load the bar all the way up, unrack it, do an eccentric to pin, stop at the pins, unrack the weight, re-put the bar back up and re-rack all the weights again for every single rep. It's extremely inefficient. It will make you extremely sore. It's going to be time consuming because you're going to have to do twice as many reps. Like let's say you were going to come in and do 20 total working reps you're gonna to have to find a way to lift them with a machine or unrack and re-rack them every single one of those 20 reps. But if you wanted to get the same gains you were gonna get from conventional training, you're probably gonna to need to do like 40 reps instead of 20. Uh, you're just gonna get really, really sore. You're gonna waste an enormous amount of time. You're gonna have a higher risk of, risk of injury and you'll make about the same amount of gains. That's pretty much what the, the data shows on it that's looked at it. All right, uh, next question. If someone stays on maintenance calories and creates a deficit with cardio and loses 5 to 10 pounds of fat, will the pounds lost over time come back if the person decides to stop doing cardio and remains on maintenance calories, or will they gain the weight back? Thank you, Jason. Well, maintenance is never constant. Maintenance is never constant, right? Your maintenance changes based upon your activity level. Uh, your body weight, all this other stuff. So if you have maintenance calories right now of 3,000 and you add a bunch of cardio, you're not at maintenance anymore. Let's say you're burning 500 extra calories every day with uh, cardio. You're at a 500 deficit, you're not at maintenance. So if you lose five pounds or 10 pounds or whatever it is, if you go to what your new maintenance is, 
because your maintenance is going to change. I mean, your your day to day activity, what you do in the gym, what you do for work, uh, how much you sleep that that's all dynamic. Maintenance is a dynamic number. It is not constant. In other words, if you're someone who trains and works out, unless nothing has changed in your lifestyle in the last year, I promise you your maintenance is different today than it was a year ago unless you do the exact, literally the same activity at work, the exact same job, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed in your lifestyle. You do the exact same weight, rep sets on all your lifts that you were doing exactly a year ago, then your maintenance is going to be different. Your entire lifestyle, muscle mass, body weight has to be identical and all your ba daily work activity, job, everything has to stay the same. Otherwise, your maintenance changes. So if you're back at maintenance, whatever your current maintenance is, then your weight's going to stay the same. Why would you gain or lose weight at maintenance? You know, and you come back into the other question of did you lose muscle? Did your activity or energy change after doing the cardio? Because sometimes weight loss uh, changes your overall activity, particularly if you added an exercise to do it. So something might have changed in your work capacity and everything else. So your question isn't as simple as people say it is. A lot of people say, oh, well, you go back to the same calories, you're going to regain the weight. Well, it depends on if you lost muscle. It depends on if your lifestyle changes because your maintenance doesn't stay the same anyways. So you're going to always have to recalculate maintenance if you're trying to stay at it. So no, if you're at maintenance, you're not going to regain the weight. Why would you? All right, next question. Hey coach, for as long as I've been lifting now, going on for about six years, I've never done much of the cliche bodybuilder stuff such as drop sets, supersets, tons of isolation work flies or goofy stuff that uh, you see many bodybuilders do. I've always had the same mindset as you as far as sticking to the main compound lifts. If you ever had press 225 or bench 315, you'd be much bigger, more developed than someone doing lateral raises. I look around at all uh, guys doing all types of bodybuilder techniques I just described and generally they look bigger and have more quality muscle even though I'm stronger. Do you think there's ever a time to deviate from what the research says, stick with compound lifts and try typical bro or bodybuilder techniques that I've never tried? It almost seems like there's a disconnect between how the research says you should train versus what I see guys actually doing that stimulate size gains. For the record, I enjoy being stronger and training for strength, but I wouldn't mind actually getting big arms rather than just saying closed grip bench will make your arms big and leave it at that. Thanks, coach. Well, I don't know what your strength numbers look like, brother, and I don't know what lifts you're doing. I'm going to say you probably don't need to add bodybuilder techniques. If you're not happy with the size of a muscle, you need to do more work for it. Uh, I don't know how else to say that. In other words, if you're benching, your max bench is 315 on your close grip, that's what you said you're trying to get to, so I assume it is, and your triceps aren't big enough, you, you just need more tricep volume. Now, if you want to go do some isolation, that's not the way I'd recommend you do it, but that's fine. If that's what you need to do to bring a muscle up, then do it. Or you could do more volume on weighted dips, overhead pressing, other stuff. You know, in, in other words, if you have a set of muscles that are too small, you're simply not putting in enough work. It doesn't mean you have to do bodybuilder stuff like machines or cable flies or, or whatever else. It doesn't mean you need to do triple drop sets, but it does mean you don't have enough training volume in those muscles. You aren't doing enough total volume. And if those muscles are smaller than you'd like and you get enough training volume in on your various lifts, you're still going to you're going to get stronger anyways, right? You're going to get stronger. So you need to do more work for those muscles. And you also got to factor in some of the guys who you see doing a lot of the fluff and pump. You need to keep in mind how common anabolics are in, in gyms. You need to really, really, really keep that in mind. It's not just a handful of people at commercial gyms who use gear. The number is astronomical. And depending on what country you live in, you'd be shocked. I think in the UK, uh, they had found through some surveys that something like a third of guys who go to the gym regularly are on anabolics, like according to self-admitted surveys. Uh, in the U.S., it's pretty high, but not that high. It's, it's, but it, it's higher than you might realize. And a lot of the guys you see in there are on a little something. And when you talk, see any of the older guys, all these guys who are 35, 40 older who you see who are really jacked, if you really talk to them, they're all on TRT. And in my experience, a good chunk of them throw a little bit of extra stuff in here and there. A little bit of extra. That's pretty common. So that can be a factor also in what you are seeing, depending on who you're seeing specifically. All right, next question. 
Greetings, Jason. What do you think about exercise bulimia and other addictions related to physical exercise? Is it real and can it hurt your strength and muscle gains and your overall health? Sure it can. Sure it can. Uh, you need to look no further than all the cases of rehabdo. And you see that a lot with CrossFitters and other people, some of them because they're forced in the group. Some people encourage them to push beyond. Sometimes it's self-inflicted exercise addiction, which you know it can also be called exercise bulimia. The people who just do tons and tons of activity trying to burn through what they eat and not because they're trying it for a short-term weight loss uh, or for a specific goal, but because they do it all the time. And what you find with those people yeah, they do become obsessed with exercise and exercise volume to try to maintain body fat. It, you see it a lot. And in the long term, particularly if they're staying underweight and under lean as a result of it, and their health and blood work looks bad, then yeah, their health is going to suffer. In some cases, even their gains in body composition are going to suffer. Uh, because again, people are at an obsessive level rather than saying, okay, here's an ideal level for my goals and programming it properly. Because there are going to be times when your training volume could be enormous to reach a goal. Uh, ideally, as far as your, your maximum recoverable volume and stuff like that, but you've also programmed it and you don't do a single bit more than is necessary. Meaning like, let's say you're, you're, you are training two hours every day, but that's what you have calculated based upon your actual needs uh, for a specific sports or athletic or gains endeavor. That's one thing. But if you do anything beyond what you've calculated to be ideal because you have an obsession it's now going to impact your recovery, it's going to impact your gains, and it's going to impact your health. And it's, so yeah, it's a real deal, and it can be a real problem. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.